To understand how fragile a culture can be, I want to tell you a story about Boa Sr. She was the last link to a 65,000-year-old culture in the Andaman Islands. And when she died in 2010, the Bo language died too, becoming extinct. With the rise of climate change and world conflicts, there is many other aspects of culture beyond language that are disappearing every day. I believe that technologies like AI can help us preserve them in different ways than what have been done so far. Meet Manuel Sansili, a multidisciplinary artist, educator, and Mozilla Rise 25 honoree who was raised on the Caribbean island of Guadeloupe. Manuel is an advocate for the ethical use of emerging technologies, specifically artificial intelligence, and believes that one of the most powerful use cases for AI is for cultural preservation. In culture of preservation, there is the word culture, but then the word preservation, you can think of a fridge as a very good way to preserve food, right? In Norway, they have this vault and within it, they are preserving seeds of every single plant, fruits, vegetables that are disappearing over time so that we have a historical mark of that existed at some point on Earth and maybe in the future we could clone it and be able to reproduce it. And you can think about the same way for culture, bringing all of the seeds of visual or auditory representation of culture into a digital museum or a digital space is my way of creating almost a digital Norwegian vault equivalent. One way Manuel believes AI can help preserve culture is through LLMs, or large language models, thanks to their ability to process vast amounts of data quickly. This idea came to him after learning about Microsoft's Elora project, short for Enabling Low Resource Languages, which focuses on language research. A key finding from Elora's work that deeply resonated with Manuel is that every two weeks, a language goes extinct. And that's pretty, you know, a little bit scary to hear about. I have this idea for the TED Talk that I did in 2023 to actually bring Guadalupe and Creole in ChatGPT. Because when I was talking in Creole to ChatGPT, he could understand a little bit, but he would reply in Haitian Creole. Because Haitian Creole and Guadalupe and Creole are very similar. We probably have an overlap of 70 to 80% of words. It's not the same language. So when I spoke with ChatGPT and I realized it was not trained on Guadalupe and Creole, it made me think, wait, how can I do that better? How can I teach ChatGPT the language? I realized that I could create this custom GPT and actually bring PDFs of documents that comes from my family, writings from my parents, poems that I've written with the proper grammar, the proper vocabulary, and almost create this Guadeloupean GPT, as I call it, the Creole GPT, that now still is not perfect, but we're getting there. And it at least is a better representation of Guadeloupean Creole than the regular chat GPT that everybody uses every day. There are thousands of languages that are spoken by sometimes just a small community, sometimes less than a thousand people, and in some cases, less than 10. And those languages are the most endangered. So by doing that with my own culture, I'm hoping to inspire other people to think about their own languages and to do the same for theirs. Another way Manuel is using AI to preserve culture is through AI-powered tools like 3D scanning to document physical spaces in his home country of Guadeloupe and beyond. Back in 2020, the iPhone 12 Pro was the first time that an iPhone had a LiDAR scanner. It's basically sending a light beam to calculate the distance between the iPhone and a point. So now you can imagine that by moving your phone around, you can actually almost map perfectly the positioning of an object in space, which is in a way an effective cultural saving. Because for me, when I go back to Guadeloupe, there are areas that don't look the same as a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, and even less so 30 years ago when I was a kid. As those environments are also changing in topology, the surrounding fauna and flora is also evolving and sadly disappearing. And so by taking the time to actually save these things in a 3D format allows me to think about a way to preserve my culture in 3D in the digital space visually. It helped me also build better stories and better experiences, being able to accurately represent the location by having the rocks and the plants and the animals that comes from there and bring that into a game engine and create a story that is composed of real life elements. It's a way to also share a truth that might not be documented through just text. 
you might miss context, you might miss um, biases that comes from the, the winner of that story. But if you have photo, if you have videos, if you have 3D scans, now you have way more data points that can help you better reconstruct those stories or those cultures. So for cultural preservation, to me, it's a no brainer to think about the visual aspect. Um, and that's where 3D scanning comes into place for me. And lastly, Manuel believes AI can play a crucial role in cultural preservation through the art of filmmaking. When you think about Greek culture, it's through movies that people got to really be interested into it. I remember Hercules as a kid and be like, oh my God, the Greek universe is amazing. So when I was in Guadeloupe, I was telling myself, how can I do the same for my people that represent the complexity and plethora of aspects of our culture in a good way? In early 2024, OpenAI gave Manuel and his creative partner, Will Selvis, early access to their generative video platform, Sora. They used this opportunity to create Protopica, a surreal and dreamlike short film exploring the themes of cultural dislocation and the meaning of home. So we wanted to play with the concept of time and space with that story. And so AI was a perfect output because some of those shots could have not been done, you know, through CGI or through 3D, or it would have taken so many resources that we don't have. Everything that you see is actually text-based, but through hundreds of generations to make sure that we curated images that resemble what we are trying to say. People and faces that look similar to the people and faces we would have casted. Using AI was the perfect way for us to kind of tie everything back together by having those surreal visuals, ties with photorealism from vegetation and fauna cues and images that we can use that represent our culture, but that also give anyone a chance to see themselves in that movie. So we really enjoyed that collaboration between us, but also between us and the machine that we can continue to expand on. I have almost this kind of 3D idea in my head, like a, a mind map, but in 3D with many points connected to each other of video to video games, to music videos, to images, to text. And I'm just using that as a way to create snapshots in time with the hope that everybody else can participate to it and finish the tapestry. If I could be invincible, immortal, I will continue to create art forever, but I will still never be able to fully represent everything that it is in my brain. But maybe as a collective with more people participating to that effort of preserving, expressing themselves, there's so many artists out there that just don't know that they are because they don't allow themselves to express themselves. So AI for me helps everybody to have the power to plant a seed in that digital vault so that we can all preserve cultures together.